Hello and welcome to SQL Server 2012 Test Lab on Windows Server 8 Hyper-V. This is the part fifth, video number two on that. My name is Prakash. I'm working as Senior Infrastructure DB at Advanced Software. Uh, you can check the previous articles on my blog, sqlfeatures.com. Feel free to connect me on Twitter, Facebook. So this is the fifth series. Today we'll be talking about installing SQL Server 2012 on Windows Server 8. We worked on part one of this video series and where we installed SQL Server 2012. We created two more VMs. We snapshotted the VMs. Now in this series, we'll be configuring SQL Server 2012 automated installs on the two nodes. Configuration is done for VM2 all the way and this will install SQL Server as an automated install so let's continue here is the sql installation folder let's prepare the configuration file so we can do an auto install for the rest of the windows vms make a copy of configuration file add it ui mode normal go ahead and command this turn quite simple mode to true And a default configuration file will not have the license agreement. So just type this particular line. This file will be available in the SQL feature post. So go ahead and download it if you need to. And so feel free to download it. Save it. Now let's look at this call audio set. What does it do? So here's the call audio set of file. It creates these two folders. These are the installable folders where we'll install SQL Server. And here you'll, I just put a time password right now, which I'll change this later, which I'm using. Now we are calling setup.exe using SA password account and passing this account password since I'm using same password for almost all the accounts. So copy as it is. The last parameter is important where you're defining configuration file equal to Make sure it's qdc21.ini. Let's look at the extension we have. So our extension is txt. Go ahead and change it to ini. If you're not able to see the extension, then just go ahead, view, options, click on view, and uncheck hide extension for known file types. That's it. That's the configuration file we'll be using. Now let's go ahead and start the setup. Click OK to security warnings. Setup is starting. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and start same installation on TV23 as well. I'm on TV23. I have mapped the same folder, the drive, double click call auto setup dot bat here as well. If a confirmation screen comes, click yes. Perfect. This looks great. We'll be back when installation completed on both servers. I'm on DB22, installation is completed. Let's go ahead and verify it. SQL Server Management Studio. All right. Windows Authentication. Login failed because I'm logged in with QDC DB22 Administrator. I need to log in with HV Admin to make it work. SQL Features HV Admin. Though we have SA access, so let's go ahead and log in with that. Great, we have installed SQL Server 2012 version 1102100. Let's validate on QDC DB23. DB23 installation is also completed. Let's verify it. Management Studio, click Connect. 
as I have logged in with the SQL features I and main here. We just finished installing SQL Server 2012 on QDC DB22 and DB23. So now all three machines have SQL Server installed. Go ahead and restart DB22 and DB23. I'm on Hyper-V server. We shut down all these three servers, took a snapshot of it. I went ahead and took an export of these three VMs just in case at any point of time I want to come to this position. So I have two ways when I can just roll back the snapshot or I can restore VM from the export version. To export you have to shut down these machines and when you right click you'll have an option to export which you can use it and you can store it a copy of this VM at this point onto an, another location. Now let's go back, connect to these servers and validate connectivity and everything is looking good. I'm on DB1, start PowerShell. We'll do some basic checks. NSLOOKUP, do NSLOOKUP SQL features dot local. Perfect. Ping QDC DB21 local machine. Looks good. Ping QDC DB22. Okay, it seems we have some issue with that. Try ping QDC DB23. Returning. Let's go and check how DB22 is doing. Okay, so the reason the firewall domain was on here seems we forget it. So let's go ahead, turn it off, click OK, refresh. Okay, domain is off. Let's go back and try ping again. So I'm 22. Let's ping back to 22 which means all three machines are able to ping each other this machine is able to talk to domain controller as well our domain controller is also in a storage controller as well but for this part of exercise of availability groups will not be needing any kind of shared storage so we have sql server installed on all three so let's try connecting to sql server come to the corner click click on sql server management studio make sure you're connecting with sql features slash hv admin great now connect to db22 perfect now connect to db23 okay so all the db servers are connecting now repeat the same exercise what we did on 21 on 22 and 23 checking the ip addresses connectivity as well as the database connectivity once this is done we are good to continue conferring the availability group which we'll cover in the next video that concludes part five of the series in this series we install three sql servers one with graphical interface the other two with automated install using the configuration file we finished all the three vms they are now ready to be configured for availability group which we will be testing and creating in next video so here is the contact details you have you can subscribe for future articles on my site sqlfeatures.com or you can subscribe it at SQL features on YouTube. If you have any questions, log it on sqlfeatures.com blog and I usually check them, I usually respond in a couple of days. Thank you very much for watching this video and look forward to see you in the next video.